Hey there YouTube, my name is Craig. From along I-70 in Georgetown, Colorado, fall is in the air. You're watching TJV with Trucker Josh and Diesel. Enjoy! friends of the internet world and of the real world we're in Black River Falls Wisconsin just clearing out my uh, trabometers here my fuel data so that I know how much fuel I'm burning today and how many kilometers I'm driving yeah so we're gonna get going from here uh, we want to make it into Ohio we're bringing this load of lumber that I showed you yesterday now bringing this load of lumber from Canada down to Dundee Ohio I'm excited because I haven't been in Ohio in so long, but I'm not really excited for their toll road. So I'm kind of looking for ways of getting around most of it. I think we're going to go down to Joliet, Illinois, and then head across there, or maybe even down to I-80 and head across I-80, skip a few of the tolls, because right now it looks like I'm going to be spending about $200 in tolls just to get to Ohio. $170 or so, $160 to $170 American, so about $200 Canadian. And then I gotta get back it if they send me back west. That's like $400 just tolls, one trip. So we're gonna try to get around as many of them as possible. That's like, that's really greedy. Really, that's really greedy. You know, I'm all for tolls to pay off the highway, but once the highway's paid off, like, you know, you know what I mean? You know what I mean? So first things first, we need to get fuel. First things first, let's make sure our trailer's not going to fall off and make sure our trailer brakes work. How about that? They engage, they release, and the trailer's attached. It's not going to fall off. All right. And of course, as soon as I start rolling, that's when the phone starts dinging, right? Every time. Good thing I'm just rolling over to the pumps. I'm not going very far. So I'm going to kind of go around them backwards and hopefully not cause a kerfluffle. Because I don't want to go all the way out onto the actual roadway and come back in. So you'll see what I mean in a second here. This is a truck stop that I stop at quite often because it's pretty much exactly just under a day from home. And uh, I like the Flying J's. This is my personal favorite. Nothing wrong with Petros and TAs. I actually really like the Petros and TAs too. I just don't like their parking lots as much. I like their truck stops sort of better because they have more options in there. They got much better like service like service centers for trucks. But Flying J, I like their parking lots better. I don't know. Maybe it's maybe I'm just weird. We're gonna go backwards through this driveway here. Good thing we're not meeting up with anybody who wants to come through here the correct way. I'm just doing this to show you what way not to go through the parking lot. That's all I'm doing here. I'm, I'm displaying how not to exit. The Black River Falls Flying J. The exit's on the other side. <laughs> Cause a real mess up if there was a lot of trucks trying to get through there. But you'll see what I'm doing in a minute here. See, I'm gonna do a little loop to do here. And we're gonna go into the pumps. See what I did there? See what I did there? Now you understand, right? Let's go into this one. There's this building off to the right here on the other side of the pumps. I think that used to be the last, the, the, the old gas or fuel desk. They don't use it anymore. It's just an abandoned building just sitting there doing nothing. All right, here we go.
to the I-80. It's about 75 kilometers or 45 miles around, but it avoids a lot of the tolls on the way through Chicago. And it's cooling down quite quickly here. Uh, I'm seeing that they got a whole bunch of uh, giant fans over there. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys are seeing them or not, but they got a whole field full of giant fans. Someone's gonna tell them to turn the fans off. It's way too cold. Beautiful countryside here though. You know, Illinois, outside of Chicago, I'm sorry, Chicago, I'm just not a big fan of big mega cities. Uh, the countryside of Illinois is just beautiful. You know, lots of farmland, lots of small towns. And uh, Chicago's a beautiful city as well, but like I just said, I'm just not a big fan of big urban centers. So, I, mean, it's just, I just don't fit in there. <laughs> I stick out like a sore thumb. I just start talking and people are like, you're not from here, are you? <laughs> no, I'm from the bush. Yeah, oh my, you're going fast. You must be in a hurry. Thanks. So yeah, it's been a... It's been a good day. It's been a good day. Nothing to complain about, really. Uh, we got a late start, so we're going to be driving into the night, which is kind of... But, whatever. It is what it is. The good thing about driving in the United States is, at least in this part of the United States, is there's not a whole lot of wildlife, like not nothing like what we deal with up north. So uh, we don't gotta worry too much about wildlife jumping out in front of you as much. So when the sun goes down, you're not constantly scanning the ditches, your eyes turning all red because they're strained from watching for moose. <laughs> You don't want to hit a moose, all right? You can hit a deer. You don't want to hit a moose. I just nicked a moose once. You know, it was like $15,000 of damage. I just nicked him. Just took out his butt. Just took some hair off his butt. He took my whole fender off. I don't know how many of you remember that, but uh, if you if you don't remember that, you can go back to my video. Uh, you can like Google or search in the search bar. Trucker Josh stepped on a snake and hit a moose. That's what that vlog is called. I show you the damage from the moose. So it's called stepped on a snake and hit a moose. Because in the morning I took Diesel for a walk and we were talking about snakes and ironically I almost stepped on a snake as I was talking about hitting the moose. Anyway, anyway it was a long time ago. I'm not very good with titles. Okay. Look at these fans here. Look at them fans. Fancy. Very, very fancy. We just entered Indiana. I believe this is still Interstate 80. Man, you avoid the entire city by going around. In one kilometer, keep to the left on I-80. Yeah, I-80. You avoid the entire city by going around on I-39 to I-80. It is a little bit further, but there's no traffic, no stopping, no nothing, just straight shot through. That might be my regular route from now on. I mean. It does cost me a little bit of extra time, but saves me hundreds in tolls. So we're going to be avoiding the Ohio Turnpike. Uh, it's actually shorter to avoid the Turnpike. Uh, I believe it was, what, about 20 miles shorter? But it'll take 10 minutes longer. I'm not too sure exactly the route that we're taking. I believe it'll be a state highway through Indiana, south of the Turnpike. We'll be turning off here on exit 11, I-65 South, okay, towards Indianapolis. We go down to, I can't tell what road that is yet, and then head east from there, south of the turnpike. And this turnpike is very expensive going through Ohio. Remember that one time I came down here, was it just once? I think I went through here once and then went back and then went through again to Ontario. So I went through here three times. I had over $500 in toll expenses that month from those three times going through here. It's ridiculous. So I'm always looking for ways to avoid the toll rules without costing me too much extra time. That's the, that's the hard part. At least traffic isn't too bad. It's moving pretty good, knock on wood. It's uh quarter to 9 p.m. Central Time. I believe we're about to cross into Eastern Time Zone, where it'll be a quarter to 10. So that's pretty late. 
So if there's this many people out on the road now, imagine how many people would be out during rush hour. I'm just going through Gary, Indiana right now. This is a, a neighborhood that uh, I wouldn't recommend stopping in overnight, though hundreds and hundreds of truckers, I might even say thousands do, because there's massive truck stops here you can park at, but from what I've heard, crime is a little high here. Uh, and just by staying, I've stayed here a couple of nights, nothing's happened, but there's a lot of security, which always makes me a little nervous. Okay, if there's extra, extra security, there's it's there for a reason, right? Well, this dude came past me. He tried to pass me on the right here. Now there's a car there. Why wouldn't you come past me on the other side, man? No one's in that lane. In one kilometer, take US 30 Merrillville and then turn left in 510 meters. All right, so we're at exit 253, I-65 southbound. And uh, the road I was looking for before, we're turning on to US 30 eastbound. And I'm going to be taking that across towards Dundee, Ohio. And I don't know if this is going to be a shortcut or not. Like, remember the last time we tried to avoid the toll roads? That was a failure. I'm not going to do that again. Coming out of Chicago. Meters, take US 30 Merrillville and then turn left in 510 meters. So we're going to see. I mean... According to the GPS, it shouldn't take me much longer, only like 10 minutes longer to go this way. And it's actually, what was it, close to 30 miles short? 400 shorter? meters, 40? turn left on, East 80, First Avenue, US 30. Yeah, it was actually quite a bit shorter in distance, but uh, I guess we'll see. We'll, we'll find out. I need to turn from this lane to my right. Always turn from the outermost lane. Three left-hand turn lanes here. Wow. It's a very populated area. A lot of traffic at times, I guess. Now we'll see what the shortcut uh, entails. We'll, we'll see what happens. Hopefully I won't be disappointed. Well, it's not actually a shortcut. It's actually... Uh, well, yeah, technically it is a shortcut because it's shorter. Physically shorter. But I'm guessing there's going to be towns and stuff. we got to go through traffic lights and stuff. Instead of just taking the turnpike, which is just an expressway, freeway. Right? No stops, no intersections. So, uh, technically it's a shortcut. I don't know. I won't know until I try, right? I mean, I could ask you guys. You guys probably already know the answer. You're probably already yelling at your smartphone that I'm going the wrong way and that it's not going to save me any time. But if I ask you, then i got to wait for the response. And I'd probably try it anyway. So I'm one of those kinds of people. You can you can tell me all you want about which way is better. I, I've got to learn for myself. I'll try it anyway, because I'm going to try and prove you wrong, right? But who knows? I'd probably just end up proving you right. I don't know. So U.S. Highway 30 eastbound through Indiana into Ohio. Let's see what it does for us. Continue on this road for 181 kilometers. It's not going to be all red lights all the way. Got to get out of town sooner or later, right? There's so many people living around here. It's just crazy. Well, we shall see. You know, the city planners, or pardon me, not the city planners, the turnpike planners and the, you know, the, the, the people who plan these roads, right? They plan them on purpose so that the turnpike and that the toll roads are way shorter and way more convenient. They don't want to give you any other options because then they don't get money out of you, right? They know us. They know people. They know we're looking for a deal. So they're purposely going to make it so much better just to take the toll road that we'll just fork over our money, right? I'm not as easy to convince. So I got I to gotta check for myself. Hopefully once we get out of this town, whatever town we're in right now, that uh, the traffic lights will disappear. And then it'll just be uh, a nice, free-moving U.S. highway. We're somewhere in Ohio. I see a truck stop here. I'm not too sure what truck stop it is, but I sure hope they got parking because I have 24 minutes left on my clock. Looks like it's a Pilot and uh, something S. 
Excuse me. Well, there's two truck stops here. I really hope I can find a spot at one of them. Yeah, it's like late at night. It's probably not gonna happen. If not, then there's a rest area just around the corner. I'm gonna go try. Let's see what they got. In 200 meters, make a U-turn if possible and then turn left in 250 meters. Oh, Karen, I know. You're upset. You want to keep going. The law says I gotta stop. I'd like to keep going too, myself. But we gotta find a parking spot. And I'm not liking the looks of this truck stop. This is a really small, small lot. Oh boy. Oh no, no, no. I don't think we're gonna find any, any parking back here. This is one of those really tight lots. This is a good lot to lose a front bumper in, you know what I mean? Nothing free. A spot in there? No, nope. there's a bobtail in there taking up a whole spot. Thought I told you guys to stop doing that. <laughs> okay, well now, now I'm going backwards. In the part, I think. I have no idea what's going on here. Oh, there's spots here. Oh, these are to pay to park. I'm not gonna pay to park. Greedy, greedy pilot. That's what we're gonna call you, greedy pilot. Okay, well, I'm not gonna waste any time then. Oh wait, is this a pay to park here? Yes, it is. This is all pay to park. Greedy, greedy, greedy. You're not getting my money. I'm gonna go down the road to that rest area then. That's a bummer. Okay, well, I don't got any time to waste really. Gotta get going. Just doing one quick pass through this little truck stop. It's a speedway. That's what it was. S stands for speedway. A little pass through here just in case there's a spot open, but of course there's not. Of course there isn't. Why would there be a spot open for Trucker Josh? That would make sense. All right, we now have 14 minutes left of drive time. There was no room for us at either end. So this is our last last resort. I'm hoping this is one of them big rest areas. I'm thinking there'll be room for us here, just looking at the, the rest area across the road there. And the fact that there's no trucks parked on the ramp here. Oh, uh, there'll be room for us here. Good thing, because I can't go any further. We're making room. Trucks this way, right? Awesome. The only bad thing about staying at a rest area is that there's no coffee in the morning. Continue on this road for 81 kilometers. Really? 81 kilometers? How big is this rest area, Karen? I think I'm gonna stop right in here. Continue on this road for 81 kilometers. Yep. Is this a parking spot? I do believe so. Wonderful. Wonderful. Oh boy. Oh boy. Let's let the good people know we are here. See, all this paperwork used to take a long time to complete. Now it's just like, boop, 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 push a few buttons and it's done. No more paperwork, no more like binders of just loose paper or log books. I actually, you know, I kind of like the e-log. A lot of people who uh, are very against it, but it hasn't slowed me down at all. It's something to get used to, that's for sure, but I, I think I got used to it pretty quick. Though I was pretty used to technology already. I'm uh, technologically savvy. That's what people have said to me before. And one more, oh, one more, and boom. Just like that, all my paperwork for the day sent in. Finished. Thir you have zero hours and 13 minutes of remaining drive time. 13 minutes. 
let's put ourselves into the sleeper berth. I'm gonna, in a minute, I have 13 minutes to do my post trip. I just gotta walk around the truck kit and make sure everything is as it should be at the end of my day. And I'll do my pre-trip in the morning. All right, guys, thanks for watching today. Uh, just a little update on this uh, shortcut or whatever, this uh, toll avoidance on US 30. It is a good option, but only if you're going further south. If you're going up to Cleveland, it wouldn't work because Dundee, Ohio is south of Cleveland. And so we went around Fort Wayne, Indiana, and uh, for our route for this trip, the US 30 worked great. So I saved myself like $200 in tolls probably, or at least 150. I had to pay a couple of tolls. I think I remember two tolls that I went through in Illinois. Can't ditch them all or can't avoid them all, but I think, I think my toll bill will be like 30 bucks, 20, 30 bucks instead of 200. And it didn't cost me any time. It was an extra 60 miles to go around here, but I think that with all the time that I saved, because I would have been going through Chicago during rush hour, eh, I don't think I lost too much time coming this way. So the experiment worked this time. Last time it didn't. So we're one for two, 50% success rate on avoiding tolls. <laughs> So I'm going to deliver this freight tomorrow morning here in Dundee, just down the road. And then uh, we'll see where we go from there. If we're going back west, then we're going to have to play games with these tolls again, depending on where we uh, where we pick up. But if we're going east, I'm thinking they might send me into southern Ontario from here. Well, then I can probably just go over the Ohio Turnpike and take other roads up to cross into Ontario through at Detroit or, uh, or Port Huron. We'll see. We'll talk about that tomorrow though. Thanks for watching once again. Please don't forget to subscribe. We make a new video every day. We'd love to have you part of this channel. Uh, we're almost up there at 100,000. We've been making videos for seven, eight years, seven years, something like that now. Pretty crazy. Yeah, hit that subscribe button, hit the bell button, leave me a comment below, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Say goodbye, Diesel. Say goodbye. Goodbye, Diesel. Smart guy. You're a smart guy. Hey there YouTube, my name is Craig. From along I-70 in Georgetown, Colorado, fall is in the air. You're watching TJV with Trucker Josh and Diesel. Enjoy!